Okay, so I, I mentioned earlier in the show, I have an apology to make. I do. I've been very critical. I've been very critical of this man. I've been very, very critical of a head coach who I, I think has been warranted in recent years. I think, well, I thought it was at least. I've been very critical of the head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. Pete Carroll and I, (laughs) I say like we know each other. Pete Carroll and I have had a, uh, not necessarily the most uh, loving relationship. I have not had the most fond things to say of Pete Carroll. I should have been, I should, I I, should have. I said he should have been fired four years ago. I said he was holding this team back. I said he is the most overrated person in all of sports. Not player, not GM, person. I sat here, probably here, and said that Pete Carroll is the most overrated person in all of sports. All right, Pete Carroll, 4-3, and three, leading your division, just went on the road and took care of the Los Angeles Chargers. Pete Carroll, I'm sorry. Pete Carroll, you have proven me wrong. Up to this point, you have proven me wrong. Pete Carroll has turned this team of, of misfits, of rejects, of late-round picks into a pretty serious team. Believe it or not, the Seattle Seahawks have the second most points In the league. Only trailing the the Kansas City Chiefs. Shocker. Chiefs are number one. They have more points than the Bills. More points than the Bengals. More points than the Ravens. Their rushing attack is top ten. Points points for it is is second. Geno Smith, passing-wise, having himself a very good season. 210 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. Passed a rating of 105. Kenneth Walker the third. I really liked him in Michigan State, but I Rashad Penny, I thought was really going to be a workhorse for this team, and he was for a few weeks, and then obviously he goes down for the rest of the season. But Kenneth Walker, 168 yards, two touchdowns behind a rebuilding offensive line. Pete Carroll has fixed the running game, which was dead with Russell Wilson. There was zero rushing attack with Russell Wilson the last three years. Now 214 yards on the ground. One of the best rushing attacks in the league. And your starter went down. And then even the receivers. DK went down. DK went down with a knee injury. He had one catch for 12 yards. Marquise Goodwin. 49er reject. Four catches, 67 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, obviously I have my own problems with the Chargers. I've, I've, I've talked time and time again about the Los Angeles Chargers and what I think is wrong with that team, starting with head coach and then coaching staff really as a whole. There's a lot of issues with that team on offense and defense. I love Herbert, but there are some issues. There are some things to point at with that team. Seattle Seahawks are electric. They Seattle Seahawks are what we kind of thought the Lions were going to be after the first two games, where the, where the Lions had the best offense in the league, they put up, I think, 40 points, a 40 point average of the first two games. And now we've seen the Lions' true colors. They have no roar. DeAndre, missing DeAndre Swift and Amon Ra, there is nothing else that goes into this team. And how many, how many teams could survive without their best two weapons? I don't know. But the fact is, they're one in five. The fact is, the Seattle Seahawks are currently first place in their division. I defended Russell Wilson so much. And I have been very reluctant to change my tone. I've been very reluctant to blame Russell Wilson for what's going on with the Broncos. Now, don't get me wrong. I have started to come around as time has come on. And yesterday, he wasn't playing yesterday, but this team, the Broncos are still terrible. The Broncos are a terrible team. But for years, I was so angry with Pete Carroll and wondering, what, why is he holding this team back? Why is he so opposed 
to letting Russ cook. Why is he so insistent on running the ball with a terrible run game, with a terrible offensive line? And now it's working. You move off for Geno Smith. Again, the, the island of misfit toys. Geno Smith didn't work with the Jets. It's been a career backup backing up Russell Wilson with the Seahawks. The, the, C, the, the Seahawks get Drew Locke in return with other, obviously other pieces for Russell Wilson. And I think the majority of us assume that Drew Locke would be the starting quarterback for this team. Pete Carroll watches them both play, makes the decision to go with Geno Smith. And of course, me, my big head, sits here with this microphone and says, that is a terrible decision. Drew Locke has higher potential. He makes a lot of mistakes. I get that. But if you just look at the ceilings, I'd rather roll it out with Drew Locke because you're probably not going to do much this year anyways. I think I had him winning three or four games total. And now here we are. They're four and three through seven. I thought this team was was Bryce Young. was going to be going in for Bryce Young. I thought this team was going to be going in for C.J. Stroud. And now they're in first place. They're ahead of the Niners. They're ahead of the Cardinals. They're ahead of the Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. And they have an easy schedule. They have a last place schedule. Things aren't going to get really difficult for them. They have to play their division opponents. That obviously sucks because it's a very difficult division. But Pete Carroll, I am sorry. As things stand, now... I am ready to pull this cord back at any moment. I am ready to say, wait a minute, Pete Carroll actually does suck. Because I like being right. Come on. Everyone likes being right. So if Pete Carroll, if this team does start to fall, I'd be like, yeah, I'm just going to reel that back in. Because, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Up to this point, I have been wrong about Pete Carroll. I've been wrong about the Seahawks as they are first place in their division. Don't get hip hop.